In this video, I'll explain how to create a data frame with spaces in the column names using the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. So in this tutorial, I will show you two different ways on how to create a data frame. And in the first case, I'll illustrate why it is problematic to create a data frame with spaces in the column names. So the first data frame that I want to create in this example is called data dot and can be created with lines two to four of the code. And as you can see within the data frame function, I'm trying to specify column names with spaces in the column names. So if you run lines two to four of the code, you might expect that we have created a data frame with spaces in the column names. However, if you print this data frame to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line five of the code, you can see that our column names of the data frame have dots in between instead of spaces. And the reason for that is that the data frame function by default converts spaces in column names to dots. And for that reason, I want to show you a second alternative on how to create a data frame in which I'm specifying that I want to keep the spaces in my column names. And this second alternative is shown in lines seven to 10 of the code. So in lines seven to nine, I'm using exactly the same syntax as I already did in the first creation process of the first data frame. However, this time I'm specifying the check.names argument to be equal to false. So if you run lines seven to 10 of the code, a new data frame is created at the top right, which is called data space. And if you print this data frame to the bottom in the RStudio console, you can see that our new data frame, which is called data space, contains spaces in the column names. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage, statisticsglobe.com, because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.